Well, Gary Sharp here again. Another episode of Venture Tube. This one's gonna be fun. Uh, you're gonna watch Tony work his tail end off digging a hole and I'm gonna tell you why. It's all about cooking a turkey. We've all cooked our turkeys over the years. We've cooked them in the oven. We've cooked them in the roaster. In the past 10 years, everybody's been excited about deep frying their turkey. We've cooked them on the grill. We've cooked them on the spit. There's all kinds of ways to cook your turkey. But I bet you've never cooked your turkey this way and I bet you will next year or even this Christmas. Here's some of the things that you're gonna to need to bury your turkey in the ground. You're gonna need firewood. You're gonna need some baling wire. You're gonna need a burlap gunny sack. You're gonna need an oven roasting bag, a roasting pan, a sand, safety glasses, fire extinguisher, and some thick work gloves. You're also gonna need some river rocks, around five to 10 inches in diameter about 10 of them or so. Uh, don't use concrete or bricks. Those tend to blow up in the fire. It's a safety hazard. As far as which kind of rocks to use, you might want to consult a geologist to find out which kind don't blow up in the fire. I like to just tend to go down to the river and grab some rocks and throw them in there and see what happens. In our case for this trip, you know, usually I just like to go down the river and even get the sand. But uh, in this case, we bought the sand at Home Depot, which you can do. They sell bags of sand. You get you three bags of play sand. Also, the river rocks. Never had to buy river rocks before, but Home Depot actually sells a bag of rocks. These ones are natural rocks, but they're a little bit smaller than we use, so I'll probably use uh, more of them than we're typical. But these rocks go in and they help retain the heat, and that's an important part of cooking anything is retaining heat. We're about to get the show started. Come on. Step one, you get you a cute little partner, Hello. and you dig a three by three by three foot hole in a safe location. Yeah, it's tough work, but this is the hardest part of the whole thing. Keep going. Okay guys, so I've dug about two feet six inches. You could go a little further, but I hit some clay. And the ground got really hard. So what I did was just add some water, let it settle for a couple hours and come back and it made it a lot easier to dig up. The next step is digging the chute. Tony, stop. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> Okay, so we have the 23 pound turkey inside of a Reynolds oven bag and a basic turkey disposable roaster. We're about to place it in a burlap sack. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this baling wire, cut about a four foot section and wrap it around the end here so it'll help when we dig it up tomorrow. Okay, so after you have that tied on, now it's time to wet the burlap sack. Okay folks, and now Tony is going to dig out about half of this nice hot bed of coals that we have here and rocks. So he'll get about half of the rocks and half of the coals and set them aside. And we'll just kind of watch him do that. going to make sure and dig down in there and find some of those rocks that have made their way to the bottom. Over here we had a couple of big logs that just didn't burn down enough so we're actually going to put them on top of the whole thing when we get done. Okay he's going to level that out nice and level and 
Now we're going to put a, a layer of sand on top of all this bed of coals once it gets it nice and leveled out. I want to get a nice even solid one inch layer of sand on top of those coals. Keeps your burlap sack from burning. Now, it's time to set the turkey in there. Set it right down in the center. Perfect. Okay, now I'd, I'd fill around the edges with one of those other bags of sand. Just filling in around the sides with sand. Because we've got to get up and get a layer of sand over the top of that bag. That's what we actually are going to wind up doing. So this is the next uh, level. You got your sand on top of your bag. You got your wire sticking out. Now we're going to put the coals in on top of the second layer of sand. This creates the oven effect that we're looking for to cook this turkey. It's got some of the rocks mixed in with these coals so that we have some good heat retention. And now it's just a matter of burying that hole the rest of the way. We're burying this one a little bit later than we usually uh, do, so you want to leave it underground, you know, a good 12 hours or so. So, you know, I would say we'd be digging this one up around 11, 11.30 tomorrow. Okay, so we got it completely buried here. We got a slight little hill on it. I think that helps to retain the heat, but there was no need to pack the dirt. Just shovel it on there, and in the morning I'll come out, put my hand on it, see if the dirt's warm. Just for that confirmation to know that my turkey's cooking. Yeah, see you guys in the morning. I'm tired. Okay, Thanksgiving morning. Happy Thanksgiving. It's 8 o'clock and I gotta go over here to the dirt pile. Check to see if the dirt is warm at the top. Hopefully it is. Okay, and that dirt feels as cold as my rear end. I'm starting to feel some heat. But I mean, it's it's warm right here. I think we're good. Yeah, look here, we got a deer. Right here. You guys waiting on my turkey? It is a lot of work, a lot of preparation, but having friends and family over, cooking hot dogs with the kids, and making s'mores, that was worth it. Okay guys, it is 11.15 in the morning. We buried the turkey last night around 11.30. So the turkey's been in the ground for almost 12 hours now, so it's the moment of truth. Let's go dig this turkey up. Put on your gloves. Oh. Pretty hot. Okay, here she is. All of her glory. 11.30. Here's the alarm. Turkey feels really hot to the touch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Breaking. Oh, oh. Okay. Yeah, it smells so good. But the turkey is steaming. It was about falling apart, so 
I think this is a success. I'm going to go put it in the oven and put it in the broiler, give it a nice little tan. Let's go bring her inside. Alright guys, here's a little taste test. Try a piece. He did good, y'all. Oh, come on, you do better than that. He did real good. This is really good. You gotta go, oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is the best turkey I've ever had. He's cooking Thanksgiving dinner the rest of his life. Okay guys, that's a wrap. The turkey came out moist and delicious. As a matter of fact, my mother-in-law doesn't even eat turkey and she's eating turkey this Thanksgiving. I'd like to give a big thanks to my buddy, Gary Sharp, who shared this family tradition with us and allowed me to share it with you guys. You should definitely give it a try. It is a lot of work, but it's worth it. It's a lot of fun and the turkey, again, is just absolutely delicious. So stay tuned for the next episode, guys. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that like button if you've done something similar to this, let me know in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to my VentureTube channel. Here's my good buddy Gary with some good news that he'd like to share with you guys. Hey everybody, I wanted to say thanks for all of you who've been praying for me, posting just your kindest thoughts and comments on VentureTube. I wanted to let you know that uh, good news is they did come in and remove a, a very large tumor out of my abdomen. Uh, but uh, despite the odds, the tumor was not cancerous. It was benign. There was only about a 10% chance of that. So I want to thank God for that. I want to thank the doctors, uh, Dr. M Miguel Mercado, for doing such a fine job uh, and all of the staff at Christus St. Luke's Hospital in the Woodlands. Uh, thank you guys for your prayers and your thoughts.